Hey guys, Ruan here with Awakening Animations and welcome to part 3 of making, well, a table in Blender 2.8. Okay, so I stopped myself off screen realizing I'm not recording. Um, I basically just applied all the modifiers except the um, mirror modifiers, sorry, I removed the mirror modifiers and I applied the subdivision on one. Okay, so the next step for me here is to clean up um, geometry that doesn't add to the shape. So here in edge selection, I'm going to select, deselect, sorry, every edge here except the center one. Just who knows why. And let's dissolve them. So dissolve those edges. Don't need you. Just leave. Um, all that's fine. Um, we're definitely going to have some stuff here on the bottom. So let's hide everything else. Um, so finally, not really. Um, myself, I mean, to make this even less blocky, like you see here, we can see it. I would even add another one just on this and then clean it up again. Um, then we need to clean up some of the bevels. But this is fine for tutorial purposes and we're keeping it low poly. So this piece done. Um, let's select it. Alt H. Um, deselect it, sorry. I hide this piece now that we've finished it, basically. Um, here... Let's go back into edge selection. We do not need any of that. And up here, what's happening? Don't need that either. I don't even think we need that edge. But maybe we'll keep it there for shading purposes. Let's see if this does anything crazy to our shading. It looks okay to me, so I'm going to do the same in the bottom here. Remove those three, don't need here. Uh, that's not very funny to me. So I'm going to remove that as well. We might need to unwrap that again just to make it pretty. Here it seemed to work out fine. I don't know why that one ended up where it was. Anyway, we're going to remove these ones. Uh, that, 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 that. That. Mm, yeah. Same, yeah. So I think I might have removed extra on this one. So let's keep those top ones just for shading purposes. And that's good. So we just remove here. So reduce geometry there. Here we're going to do the same thing. We don't need that. That. And there we go. So we don't need that. And that reduces some crap here that we don't need as well. So dissolve edges. Uh, where do you come from? Hello. What's that? Ah, okay. <laughs> That's the grid line confusing my ass. Uh, we don't need that. Um, yeah, so I'm left here with two hinges to work with. Um, let's just go to this one quickly. We definitely don't need you, but we do need you finally. Okay, I'm fine with the hinges. Um, they're not that high geometry, so it's fine for me. Okay, so we're moving back to this part here. We're not going to have much to do here because all of this is contributing there um, to the geometry. In the back here is pretty much the same. Okay, so we're not producing anything there. So that's about it. We reduced all the geometry we need to reduce. Bring everything back. Uh, we need to check this um, piece. Uh, the one that doesn't have a seam anymore. Let's 
this one there. Okay, so we might have something something funky happening here. So what I'm going to do is look where this edge is here. Let's do that. Okay. So it's that edge, which is right on the top here. So it's this one. Yep, that looks fine to me. Um, control E, mark the seam. And we just want to select this piece. And yeah, we going to try and match it up there again because it's going to be super big now so you unwrap this guy we might have some edges to straighten and it doesn't look like we do which is great so we're okay 90 i said 90 oh. okay okay so there's definitely some stuff happening here um, I think I did this did this before, which I'm not sure it's a great idea, but anyway. Something like that, maybe a bit more. Hmm. <laughs> they look off to me. I mean, these two should be the same. Something wrong. Um, let's see what happens if I unwrap this guy. Does it get the same shape as this one? Okay, I'll tell you what. It's a better idea. Unwrap them together. <laughs> Um, give it, uh, don't care about the distance, rotate this 90, drop it in here, and just get it to fit nicely in there. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. Those pieces might be taking up quite a bit of space, so let's take them a bit down. Something like that. And that maybe allows us to bring the leg up a bit, which is already taking up quite a bit of space, if you ask me. Um, hopla. Okay, so I'm just sorting some of this stuff here that seems good giving it some space to breathe what's happening here this is two pieces Ooh. we want you guys both of you Anyway, let's not get too worked up on that. So there we go. We've got our table and now we can get to unwrapping. Okay, 10 minutes of crap. Uh, there we go. So there's going to be two methods to do this. For both of them, you do need add-ons. Um, they're free. So the first add-on, most of you guys would know it's Node Wrangler. Um, we're going to use this for the one method, okay? And the other one, principle Baker. So this one's free as well, just put it on Google. It's made by Daniel Engler. And yeah, it just makes all inputs of a principle BSDF to image textures. That's great. Okay, so just get those, save it, install it, and get cracking so we know here we've got a metal and a wood okay and we do now have one object here as well where can i name this guy now 
save the table. And yeah, so shading. Um, I do have a light setup and stuff just to show you guys that. So maybe a bit more than needed, but I've got a few area um, lights on different angles, maybe some colors on them, and then just the camera. And I've got a world set up as well. So if we go into this here, this is my world setup, and yeah, we we also did a material for this floor as well. Okay, so let's get back to action. So sometimes this thing does that. I don't know why. It's like I just need to replug the color. There we go. Did something there. Okay, so we want to bake the table, not the floor. So I'm going to select the table. Here's our very unneat setup here. Um, this part of yours might not be plugged in. Might be plugged in like from here in there. Just make sure this is plugged in. Yeah, it's our overlay with some smudges here, I believe. Yes. I mean, screen. Okay, so. In this section, I'm going to show you the method I would have used before um, because it's really fast and um, nice. So I would use the Node Wrangler and I would bake the color and the roughness using the output of the Node Wrangler. And then if you want your normals or heights, or an ambient occlusion, you'd have to use the normal blender way, which we'll go through now. Okay, so with Node Wrangler, we can control click and select something. And it's going to show us only that um, output. So now we're not getting any of the glossy, any normals, nothing. We're only seeing the color. Okay, so then what I would do is I'd go and make sure we in cycles. Yeah going to bake and I would go to emit because basically with node wrangler when we're viewing something it's got an emission viewer node here and this is what we're gonna use basically so it's an emission so we're gonna do that and when we bake in blender and I didn't even know this until quite a while ago but your sampling your render sample samples are what samples your bake so the higher the samples the better quality of your output image but with the emission we don't need much samples to to bake and as you'd imagine if we're putting a color here like to bake the color uh, diffused we'd need the samples to be quite high to capture the right details and it's going to take a very long time but if we use the emission, I can drop this on five. And um, the next step with Blender's way of baking is to bring, is to create a new image first. So we're going to bake this at 4K. Okay. 4K. Okay. And we'll just call it Baker. And we don't need an alpha. So, so there we go. That's called Baker. Now we bring in an image texture here. Where are you? Where are you? Image texture. Grab our baker. And that's it. Make sure it's selected. And we just hit bake here. So bake. No image found in material wood. Okay. Here we are. Want to bake that. Emission to this. Let's see what we're going to get. Okay, so what that error was, was related to um, the metal. So if we wanted the metal here, we should have done that as well. So we can just copy this guy quickly and go into our metal here and just drop this in here as well. Make sure it's selected. Go back to the word. That's fine, and let's hit bake again. So now we've got no errors popping up here, and we should get both the metal and the wood color data. 
onto our bake. And you can see how fast the bake is with this method. And I'm going to show you now how the quality looks on this. Okay, so I did not get the metal, but that's fine. Um, let's not stress about that. But if we go in here, we've really got all the details that we need for our bake. So, um, let's uncheck clear image. Okay, and I want to go onto the metal now. I want to bake metal. So make sure we're here. We got this thing selected just to be positively sure. Um, we need to put our output on it. Maybe that was the problem, is that. And um, sorry, that should still be what we're viewing. I'm an idiot. So we want to view our metal, and now we can bake this guy. We uncheck that, so it should keep our wood and just bake on top of. Um, I mean, just add the metal color. Okay, so we did get a metal color, but we've got white here for some reason. Um, let's double check everything. I can see it's showing up white here as well, and there it's like we've got a problem again so now it's showing up gold again uh, let's view it with no wrangler show me no wrangler okay so this is the problem we're running into over here no wrangler can't view from this point here seems like um, i can view this guy and then i can view this but it's just doing that which forces us to take the color i think i'm going to try and bake just like this but i think it's going to give us a white again so, so i think that bake was very fast for you guys this time but as you can see we've got no output when we use the emission there so there is a way we can solve this i think we can bring in um what can we bring in? Input RGB. So I think we can do that. And it's just here now. There's no color picker. That's very annoying. Why is there no color picker here? So I want to match that color we kind of had. I don't know. That should be fine. So now that we've got that, we can run our viewer into this, and we're going to get that. Um, that's perfect. Select that. Hit bake. OK, so there we go. Problem solved. We've got our color for our metal there. Um, that's perfect. So if we save this image, um, save as textures bake okay. this was just me playing around with some things delete all that um, table color and i'll just put an e here so that we know we bake this one with the emission okay or mainly and now we're going to use the other method so we want to view this thing normally again and I wonder how this one's going to do this for us I deleted that from there and I want to go into the wood and I want to delete this here as well now um, because we shouldn't need that so now we view our main output here as well again and in the end properties we should have principal baker here we can choose um, the resolution here we can choose where the file should go so i already chose my destination but i'm going to create a new one and say 
I call this one Baker, Principal Baker. Um, let's drop everything in there, say accept. So now we've got our new place here. Um, here it shows you what it's going to name everything. So we've got a color, metal, rough, etc. Um, one thing to note here is this thing is not going to bake what doesn't exist in the input. So, for example, we should bring in a value maybe for metallic so that we can keep it on zero. Okay, that way it's going to know to bake an image from that. Um, specularity is 0 0.029, so let's copy and paste this guy. 0 0.029, and let's make sure that nothing is changing on our model. So now everything is the same. That's great, because that's what we need here. And we're going to do the same in the metal quickly. So in the metal... We've got a color now. We sorry, I pasted that with Control V. We've got a value, making sure it's zero. Our metallic here is going to be one because this is a metallic value. Okay. Then we're going to shift D this guy. Our specularity 0.5 like that. Roughness 0.41, so let's duplicate that, 0.41, and let's drop that into the roughness. So for this, we don't have a normal map. Um, if you wanted, we could just drop in a um, texture, something like a noise, view it here on this thing. Uh, we're going to need to bring in... Texture coordinates like that with um, generated on, and we definitely want to scale this something crazy a lot, a lot, a lot just to have some variation there. And um, we can take the detail to 100, distort it slightly, not too much. And now we want to view the fact here because we want the black and white that's perfect and this we're going to drive a height map with but not much at all and i still think we need to scale it up 500 800 yeah it might be better and let's bring in now uh, a vector a bump drop in the fact here into the height take the strength to 0.1 and let's drop that into our normal. And now we can view this again. And we should have some bump there on our brass now. Okay, it's still way too strong. So let's say 0 0.03. Yeah, that's better. Just a very light variation. And we can bring this into our roughness now, actually. Let's see what that does. Okay, so yes, that can be our roughness, but we'll need to bring in a color mix RGB, color 2, mix color 1. So that's going to be our noise texture. And that's going to be our normal thing. So let's try and screen these two. Uh, screen. Now they're both going to be showing. So we'll do something in between like that. Um, it's still quite too crazy here. So... To work with this value here and just get something more like that so we're just going to see it in certain angles 
it's gonna blink a bit like that okay so that's fine we did all of that some extra adjustments here but we've got inputs everywhere here that should speak to this guy um, hopefully okay so now with that said everything should be fine we select this principle here and maybe let's just select this guy just in case it does both at the same time and there we go um i'm gonna hit bake and we'll see what it does so glossiness invert i'm gonna do everything on its um base i mean default because i enabled that earlier just to see what it does anyway let's get baking and save maybe before this save bake so this one takes quite a while i know because i tried it earlier and i had less things happening so yeah i'm gonna pause it and we'll see what happens when i'm back Okay, so I came back while the bake is still happening, just to show you guys this in action. Here's my file where it's baking to, and here we can see table, underscore color, underscore metal. So it's working its way down the list, finding the inputs, and then baking the texture. And it's capturing both, which is great. We've got the wood, and we've got um, our hinges at the same time here. So there's the metal, there's the color. So I'm going to let this guy carry on and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, I'm back. So we're done. I've got that. So color, metal, normal, roughness, specular. Um, sadly, it doesn't look like I got a bump. Um, I'm not too sure why. Um, I know for the displacement map, it only works when you've got a displacement input there. Um, but anyway. It worked and we're going to test this in tool bag just to see how it came out um, but anyway that's the two ways you could bake things or the two ways I know the principal baker takes a very long time but it's as long as I think blender would take doing this and you would waste time trying to set all of this up and stuff so it's a really nice add-on I like it and I'd be using it more often in the future Anyway, we're going to test this in tool bag right now. Okay, so let's finish this up. We're obviously going to need an export of this table. So let's go File, Export, FBX, Selected Objects Only. And let's drop it with our textures here. Um, name it Table. And I realized I just messed up, but we'll fix that quickly now. Table, Export. So we're going to re-export this now. The first thing we want to do here is we just want one material now. Just one called wood. Let's call it table now. Um, and yeah, so now we can export this. Export FBX. Now that we've got one material there. And there we go. So now I'm going to load tool bag here. Where are you? Tool bag. Uh, Okay, so toolbag is really fun and quick. Um, anything that might take some time is I want to import my own um, HDRI. So I'm going to go Blender HDRIs, and I should have a new one here. Uh, why don't you think it's big icons here? Products, Studio 4K. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Okay, cool. So let's bring in our model. So it's as simple as drag and dropping it in here. So there's our table. <laughs> uh, not quite what we want. We can fix that very quickly by going into Blender now that we've baked everything. And this is quite simple. Um, the cursor is there, so we need to change this to our cursor here, um, 3D cursor. Now we select everything that needs to be mirrored to the x-axis. So that and that, and we're going to select 
all these hinges here as well so this one and this one what are you okay so we want to select um, regular that way it selects the whole object there 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 um, I want to make sure it just did it here okay so that's what we want on this side so we're going to shift D drop it in place scale X minus one okay and then we need to press shift in just to fix those normals okay now let's quickly do this one which just needs to go across and the same with our hinges here okay so then that's uh, and our legs sorry so legs shift D drop it in place scale X no sorry uh, let's undo that scale Y minus 1 and shift in to fix the normals and now we should have our completed full-on table here so let's quickly export FX table done drop back into marmoset here and look at it just update so nicely uh, okay so there are some problems here Go back into blender Things are not showing up well, so A, shift N again, just to make sure something's wrong with this piece here. So I'm going to hit, haha, so that explains a lot. I'm going to delete that. That part didn't um, copy properly. When we selected it, it didn't select this bottom face, so shift D scale x minus one ah one shift in fix those normals please and i see some hinges that didn't mirror we didn't select these ones to mirror them across there either so shift d scale y minus one okay so shift in no, that's looking better. Okay, sorry about that, guys. File, export. Anyway, if you guys run into these kind of problems, you'll know how to fix it. So back into tool bag, updates very nicely. We've got everything. So let's delete this default. Here we've got our table material, and we just drag and drop those big things. So normal map, in you go. Um, we've got a table color. Um, we've got a specular. And the thing here is that it's using um, a glass map. So we're going to take our roughness and drop it in there, and things are just going to be wrong. We need to invert it, and that is what we're looking for. So here we are, Marmoset, tool bag. Um, so that's a really strong light there. This one's a bit better. So there we go. We've got our metallic pieces, everything is looking nice. Um, here you can see how hectic this bump is, but all of that can be changed. We can bring the glass up or down. We can put it like 1.5, I think, to give it less. So it didn't work anyway. 1.5. Okay, so you can, obviously. So uh, we can bring the normals down somehow, we should be able to. Uh, okay, obviously I can't. We can bring the intensity of the specular down. It's not doing much. It's only working. Oh, it works. We've got a Fresnel slider here. That's quite nice. So there we go. That's how our table looks in a real-time renderer. I hope it's useful to you guys. And yeah, we'll be doing more projects in the future where we're going to do the same workflow.